Well, in this space, in this silence, we have definitely found God. So allow us to take this moment to find that God within ourselves. Feeling that peace, that inner wisdom, that inner intelligence that guides us through the darkest night. Through the quietest moments, we hear that still inner voice that says, I am right here, right where I need to be. And so as we just embrace this inner knowingness, allow us to be fully present as we go into this day, this ceremony, this sacred space that we have created. Allowing our speaker to be fully in tune with that that is meant to be delivered through her vessel. Allowing the listeners to be open, to be able to receive. And just allowing all of the other pieces to fall divinely in order. Releasing any hesitation, we just sit in the here and now finding that love, that joy. And we let everything else go. And so it is. Well, good morning. morning. It is time to honor our sacred paths. We are an interfaith gathering, a spiritual community that honors all teachings and all spiritual teachers. And now we can begin our ceremony that celebrates the oneness of life, which acknowledges that all people and all faiths come from the one universal presence that we call spirit. And so I invite our candlelighter up this morning, Mr. Drake Hughes. Thank you. Hey, practice makes perfect. And so let us begin. The Tao. Honoring the universal path of harmony and equilibrium. The natural way. Shamanic traditions. Honoring the beliefs and practices of all indigenous peoples the way of pristine spirituality. Hinduism, honoring the path of knowledge, action, and devotion. We have Judaism, honoring the ethical path of living by sacred law. Buddhism, honoring the four noble truths and the path of compassion. Christianity, honoring the Christ consciousness as the path of love. Islam, honoring the path of submission to the will of God as the highest calling. New thought, Honoring the metaphysical path of mental healing through the practice of universal spiritual principles. And our final candle is a healing candle of love. In this moment, in this silence, we invite you in the stillness of your own mind to bring to awareness the names of anyone or anything that you wish to be included in this healing flame of love and light. (laughs) And now that our flames of faith are fully lighted, we move forward into our celebration, realizing and reaffirming that all paths lead to God. Now that was divine timing. (laughs) I know you felt that. I have a sacred quote or two for you this morning. The first comes from Brene Brown. The dark does not destroy the light. It defines it. It is our fear of the dark that casts our joy into the shadows. We have another quote by Desmond Tutu. Hope is being able to see that there is light despite all of the darkness. And back to our quiet. Almost forgot my cue. I was hoping there was more. It sounded so good. (laughs) Well, once again, good morning and welcome to the Alaska Center for Spiritual Living. It is a tongue twister, believe it or not. 
Now, I'm very happy to be here. My name is Stevie. I'm one of the many licensed practitioners here. And as we get into our announcements, I'll be calling up a few fellows to share some things. But I want to make sure I start off with our purpose, right? One of the main things that we aim to do is provide support to the community. And that support can show up in many ways, one including prayer. So whether you are in a place where you are looking to celebrate and reaffirm your blessings, or if there is an imbalance in your life where you are seeking prayer and support, there are many ways of which you can receive this. We have our confidential prayer request that you can submit and drop into the box. You can call us, you can go online and email us. If you are in need, please, whether you're online or you are in person, do not hesitate to lean on us. This is what we are here to do. That being said, I wanted to invite up Miss Joan this morning to talk a little bit about a festival coming up, and I will step aside. There you go. Um, so we got a table, uh, we got a half a table at the Whole Life Festival this year. We're sharing with Marie Mochman. Thank you so much for sharing with us the table at the Whole Life Festival. Yay. Um, so the festival hours are 11 to 6, Saturday and Sunday, October 5th and 6th. Set up Saturday at 9, vendor blessing at 10, it op doors open at 11 on Saturday. Clean up on Sunday night, I need a little help there on Sunday night. So there are sign-up sheets on the back table. Please sign up for a minimum of two hours. More is great. I'd really like to have two people at the table at a time. Um, we'll see what works out. Um, and there's a $10 entry fee to come in uh, for each day, $10. Let me know if that's an issue, and um, I'll work on it for you. Um, and sign-ups are in the back, and I think my phone number is there, and my phone number is also on the back, so get a hold of me. Yay! Yay. Yay. What an honor to be included in such an event that is right up our alley. Don't mind me as I drop a couple things this morning. Hey, it's all divine, right? I'll get that later. All right, another couple of things I want to talk to you about. We got some classes coming up. Um, so actually starting, if I'm not mistaken, this Thursday with Linda Steiner, our very own, we have a class about courting love. So there are more details of which you can find as you see plenty of information to make sure you are informed on what you're getting yourself into. But whatever you think is on paper, expect the unexpected. It is Linda Steiner, by the way. Shameless plug. <laughs> Again, you're still able to join, but we want to make sure that you get in before classes begin. So there is that. As far as another class, we have our Foundations for Spiritual Living that will be co-hosted, if I'm not mistaken, by uh, Kaleem and Bob. It's a dynamic duo. You're going to get the basics that you need as far as our affirmative prayer and many other things coming your way. Um, the introductory class is going to be kicking off this week, and then regular classes will officially start on October 8th. So if you are thinking about it, if you're feeling an inkling, or maybe you want a little bit more time to think about it, we love when you say yes. So if it feels right, Please let us know. Last but not least, I have a little update on our gracious giving, and then I will invite our reverend up for a little minister's moment. Um, and maybe this is part of what he wants to talk about, but just kind of giving you the awareness of how we support our communities in July. We were able to support Anchorage Remade. In August, we were able to help AK Hopes and Dreams, something that speaks to my heart. Raising money for the local community, it stays right here at home. And I've got Rev coming up here, and after that, we will have special music leading into Miss Karen, who I'm super excited to hear from today. Rev. Thanks, Stevie. Uh, I, this is just a heads up because there's going to be a lot of things that are a little different that are going to be coming up. Uh, number one, we're going to have a Taze service. So instead of showing up here on Sunday morning and we've got the choir and we've got a, you know, somebody on the, the piano and no, it's going to be a regular Taze service like we used to have years ago. Um, we will have music, but it won't be like we typically have it. And there will be a time for reflection. There is a time for lighting of a candle, um, to honor, to uh, surround someone that you love in in love and light and prayer. Um, it's a peaceful, meditative time. So we're going to have a, uh, a today's service. We're also going to have a sound bath. 
we are going to have an opportunity for you to be uh, experienced to uh, sound as a group together. And I haven't got all the details from Gail yet, but once again, it's not going to be your regular Sunday with the talking head up here. It's going to be uh, quite an experience. Um, and then the holidays, the Christmas falls midweek this year, so we're going to jostle a few things around a bit. Um, the uh, 21st solstice falls on a Saturday, so Saturday night will be our big event for the thing. But for those of you who want to experience something on Sunday morning, uh, we will have a group discussion and we'll have a metaphysical topic uh, and I will lead a, a group discussion. It will be a talking stick kind of a um, endeavor. Um, so those are some of the things that are going to be different coming up in the fourth quarter. Also, um, I need to know if anyone is interested in being a delegate for CSL for the convention. Um, it, it involves some work. I mean, you've got to watch the videos of the various people that are running for all the offices and whatnot. Um, and you have to consider whether which ones you think would be doing it, but it's not restricted to practitioners or to uh, the minister, of course, or uh, it can be lady. Can, anyone can be a delegate. If you have that interest, you got to do the work. Please let me know because uh, Ann and I will probably be stepping away from that, and um, and and we will be needing somebody for. Uh, delegates. The the this year's convention is in actually in March. Uh, you know it's always been in February, but uh, uh, home office home office is going through some massive changes. One of those um, uh, every other year we have an in person convention, and then the off year it's. Uh, a Zoom um, convention. And with all of the other change that's going on, we also have another big change. And our beloved member, Judy Blake, is going to be moving away. This is her uh, last Sunday. Uh, so be sure and, uh, and tell her, let her know how much, you know, she means to all of us. Uh, I think we have a card that's floating around somewhere. Oh, look at that. It arrived. Herb, you get that. There is the mailman on time. The mailman, get it? Uh, what we know in this moment, we can be miles and miles apart, thousands of miles apart. but we can never be truly separated. You know, the, the newest discoveries in quantum, uh, quantum science show us that electrons that are separated by, you know, billions of miles can affect each other instantaneously without any type of communication. So uh, we may be far apart, but we're never separated. Saying yes to that song because I know for some it's not necessarily their favorite, but it is certainly one of my favorites. Um, Oyaheya means praise the spirit, and that definitely has been coming up for me all this week when I asked Aaron. I actually asked Aaron about most of the songs that were sung this week because there were certain things, and you will feel that throughout the theme of my talk. And also, um, sabiduria, which is a Spanish word meaning wisdom. So welcome to the Alaska Center for Spiritual Living. Welcome here in this space and welcome online, knowing that you are also filling up this very space, for we are all one. At the beginning of the week, um, if you first of all, if you looked at the slide, that said what the talk was going to be about. I had called Rev Dawn and I had been talking to a couple of people because 
the title just wasn't coming through to me and a lot of times it does but this week I was challenged with coming up with the title because um, it was clear spirit was calling me to talk about the shadow yet I could not name or define what the title would be that would encompass and embrace everything it's definitely about embracing the shadow but in order to embrace the shadow what came through me clearly this morning when I was writing this was it's about illuminating the shadow so the talk is about illuminating our shadow um, there are moments that a talk comes through like it's just like it's an immediate download you can ask anyone who has done a talk it's just like you need to pull over you hope for a piece of paper there's sometimes that it's coming through a dream and you hope that you're going to remember it um, and then there's other times where there's like nibbles it's like starting to like bake a batch of cookies or something and there's like an ingredient that comes in at one time and then there's an ingredient that comes in another time. I've asked um, Amy and Bob to put up a slide for you because this is the moment that this talk um, came to me. Yep, it's okay. We can wait. It's all right. This is not McDonald. This is... Um, one of my seven grand loves. This is Zayden. He is two. And when my um, youngest son and his family came home, because that's where this is where he was born and raised, came home for a visit, Zayden discovered his shadow. And do you see the curiosity and the wonderment and when he's seeing his shadow and then the bright smile on his face? when um, he's just like walking along with his shadow. And um, so um, the talk about illuminating the shadow, I'm going to discuss this wonderment, curiosity, the human self and spirit self, and this faith, hope. Um, and while we're talking about this, this wonderment and this joy across his face, um, he, he discovers this thing, right? He doesn't know that it's a shadow. He just knows that there's something that's there and like, wow, look at that, wow. And so I, it got me thinking about um, when is it that the shadow becomes the darkness that we're afraid of? Because in our younger self, we're not afraid. Yet as we get older, it happens. And I'm sure it's different for each of us, yet I think that there's the possibility within our oneness that it may be the moment that we lose our innocence or that we start growing more layers of our human self and we're staying less connected to our spirit self. Um, and versus seeing them as being intertwined, interconnected, right? It's a co one collective energy that runs through us and as us. Because um, last week when Colleen was talking and I had been the POD, I had some said something about our human selves and he said something about us being spirits so you'll see some of Colleen's talk and even Rev Don when he first started the pieces to peace which also is a part of the title it's all intertwined and when we layer things on top of each other right like putting the frosting on the cake it embeds all that learning for us so what am I referring to when I say the human self I'm referring to the human experience, the human conditioning, what we inherit, what is put upon us, so to speak. Because when we come into this world, we come in with all innocence and not having all those. There, is some, there are some babies, right, that experience trauma within the womb, and yet still there's a lot of that spirit self that is still the part that created us, the seed the seed and the womb it's what creates us it's the very beginning of of what we're manifesting it's what we believe so um, things experiences situations that create many different emotions and feelings for us for some of us being human can seep us into a darkness it's a darkness where we don't recognize the spirit part of ourselves and we don't remember who we are. With young people at school, I talk about the brainstem, and I've talked about this with all of you before, about the amygdala. 
There's the prefrontal cortex, right? This is the problem solving part of the brain. This is the part that makes decisions, that offers choice. We're in the back part of our brain. That is the part that's processing particularly all of our emotions, particularly fear, anxiety, and anger. And so we don't show up always as our best selves. And that goes back to the saying that the re first reading that I had Stevie Reed, which was the dark does not destroy the light. It defines it. It's our fear of the dark that casts our joy into the shadows. And sometimes we feel like it's not a choice. Life happens to us and in our human beings, we, and as our human selves, we forget all the stuff. When we're in our amygdala, that's when the time is to pick up the phone and call. Ask Rev how many times I do that with him. <laughs> A lot. <laughs> because that's what I meant when I said last week, we are human. We are humans. We, we are the divine experiencing the humanness. We are one with the divine experiencing humanness. So... Um, an analogy I like to equate this to is learning standard arithmetic and knowing that 1 plus 1 equals 2. But did you know that Boolean algebra, we learn 1 plus 1 equals 1? Or that in synergy arithmetic, 1 plus 1 equals 3? And that also with standard arithmetic, it's based on a base 10. But what if it's base 7 or base 3 or base 15? It looks entirely different. My point is that we can become stuck in one way of thinking or stuck in our emotions, our feelings, our situation, what we've inherited, and then we ground ourselves in that and we can't see anything but that. And we claim that as our stories and we're comfortable staying in that as our stories. But light can be in the form of meditating, visioning, classes, exercise, being outside. That's what Colleen was talking about. That's what Rev has talked about, too. All of the things that we have here at the center and things that you know that are good for our bodies. Water, breathing, all of this, bringing oxygen to a situation, all of that helps us bring light. It does not mean to negate or ignore what is coming from the shadow itself. It brings focus to what we need to grow. So when we turn to the light, I'm not asking for a Pollyanna situation in saying that the shadow doesn't exist. The shadow is there to help us grow. The shadow is there to bring light to the surface of what isn't working for us anymore and what we need to let go of. But we can't let go of it until we go back to the spirit self. And what does that mean? That is the collective energy that is in all of us. We are one with it, capital I, and it, capital I, is one with us. It is remembering our pre-birth before we started getting in our own way, before others started putting things upon us and trying to tell us who we are or, that, or us feeling like we're not enough all of those situations. It's the ability to release what no longer serves us. And we can do that with a lot of help. We can do that through our symbol, right? The spirit is the seed, the soul is the soil, and the body is the plant. The, the spirit, the seed is the realm of possibilities. It's the realm of ideas. It's our thoughts. That's why we say be careful of what you're thinking. It's the part that we're at choice. We get to decide. We get to create. We get to change. We choose what we want to plant. Even in the garden, we're choosing what seed we want to put where. Soil and the soul is the subconscious mind that reflects the, imp the impressions of spirit without any control or act outcome. It's passive, but yet still very much needed. It's necessary. We cannot grow 
a seed into a tree without soil. The soul makes ideas manifest. The soil makes the plant grow along with the light. It still needs light. And the body, the plant, is the realm of the physical objects, the effects, the forms, the results, <coughs> the space, the time. It is shaped by spirit. Actually, it's the, it's the least important because we may think that it's going to look one way, but spirit, love, God, whatever you want to call it, may have something totally different that is, that is so much better than we could have ever imagined. We came as a seed, but we are not a perennial. <laughs> Do you want to be a perennial? Anybody want to be a perennial? We continue to grow and change each time we plant a different seed. It can be both painful, very, very painful, and it also can be exhilarating and freeing. I'm for freedom. It's only if we're willing to detach and make ourselves anew. Um, I have a peace plant at home. I love peace, peace plants. And I, I wasn't doing so well with my watering of my plants the past couple of weeks. And a peace plant is really interesting. It'll droop in and stuff. And it looks like it's going to wither. And as soon as you give it water, it just goes whoosh, and it will continue to blossom. It's not one of those plants that you have to be tender with. And doesn't that speak to us all about peace? Like, look, it was ready. It was ready to grow and glow. I watered it and it said, here I am. I'm glowing. Bringing awareness, shining the light, illuminating the darkness, the shadow with faith and hope. Not hope in the begging sense. That's not the type of hope that I'm talking about. I've had trouble with the word hope in the past sometimes because people will use it as a way of begging. And I say, no, not hope, but knowing. But something so clearly came through me and I was so blessed by spirit this week when I had this whole thing about hope. Hope is in the promise of the seed and the soil that creates the plant or the spirit in the soul that creates a new body. It's not like I'm totally regenerated with my skin, but I'm regenerated on the inside. I come out as something different and I don't hold on. People will be to say to me like, how can you be okay with all the things that have happened to you in your life? I'll be like, but look at who I am now. And I love who I am now. And I wouldn't necessarily be who I am now or have all, of the, have all these blessings and things happening without some of the stuff that grew me into who I decided to change into in this moment. And so as Desmond Tutu said, right, hope is being able to see that there is light despite all the darkness. Hope, hope, hope. Here open possibilities evolve hope here open possibilities evolve there are many possibilities not just one just like there are many flavors of ice cream not just one it allows us to continue to glow within our growing and let the spirit self come shining through Less of the human, more of the divine. Less of the human, more of the divine. Our why, our spirit self, for our sole purpose. What are we living? What do we want to live within our bodies? What is our soul calling? It almost feels like that was a prayer already, but I'm going to move us into prayer anyway. And as I feel that spirit calling, spirit calling, hmm, with the sun that shines so ever brightly amongst the clouds, with the crisp air that is coming into Anchorage now, and that dust that falls gently on the mountains, letting us know that things are 
changing. They're starting to change already. And isn't it wonderful that we can change too? And so as I seep into this, knowing that I am continually changing and growing in my health, in my wealth, in my abundance, and what I'm claiming and knowing for myself, I know that for each person in this room physically, each person that has tapped in and tuned in online now and forevermore, and I know that for our universe. What is the word that you're calling? I invite you to call it out right now. What word is it that you're wanting to manifest right now? Call it out now. Love. And I am so grateful that I know this for myself and I know that for each of us. Love, joy, peace, abundance, health, wealth. It is all ours and so much more. I give thanks. Thank you, God. I release and I know that it is absolutely so. And so it is. Well, well. With that shining moment in mind, we have a chance to practice what we preach. So now is our time in our ceremony where we get to embrace that law of circulation, knowing that all that we put out into this world, when we give freely, is multiplied and spread back to us so we can share again. <laughs> so I invite you to, enjoy, uh, to join me in this affirmation. Divine love. Through me, blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God. And so it is. Hey, don't mind if I do. Now allow us to remember that inner child. As we go into this opportunity to celebrate the children, I believe we have just one. Or two. Just kidding. Beautiful. We're going to pull them on in. God is everywhere, and boy, is God busy today. <laughs> and so it is. And so it is. <laughs> you, are you are the star of the morning. You are heaven smiling at us. You're God's gift of tomorrow. Oh, how we love you. Oh, how we love you. So let us take this opportunity. As we've spent this ceremony embracing the light of God, of love, of this universal presence, allow us to also recognize the power of the shadow, that invitation to see the opposites in life that show up and recognize that that is God as well. So when we experience pain that shows up because it is real, when we experience this idea of separation, when we see in our physical world that maybe there is lack, allow that to remind us that, that if that is true, that the opposite has to be even more true. Allow it to invite us to find that childlike wonderment as we just get curious as we allow ourselves to step into our true nature of peace, of that infinite connectedness, and knowing that, you know what, right now it might look scary, but the things that are scary now, we embrace with joy at a point in time. And so let us just allow these false ideas, this judgment to fall, and to integrate the pieces of our shadow that will bring us closer to that truth of our light. And with that, we can give great thanks 
knowing that we are full in our expression of love, that we are complete and whole, and that nothing can take away from that, shadow included. And so we let it be, and so it is. And so it is. My affirmation. I am the light. I am the light. My shadow is also in that light. My shadow is also in that light. And so it is. And so it is.